Oh, hello there. Thanks for being with us here on First Take. Stephen A. Smith is gridlocked in that tri-state area traffic. What? Yes. I'll be here shortly. I heard the Pope's in town. Yes. Listen, meanwhile, we're in good hands, though, because Skip Bayless is here and Super Bowl champ Darren Woodson. So it's all good, right? I'm Molly Karam. Get your butt in here, Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Darren, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm yeah. great. I'm great. Hey, we got Philadelphia and Dallas Cowboys uh, yes. this week. Good. This should be a good game. And by the way, before we proceed, I want to congratulate you because you are going to be inducted into the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor on November 1 when Seattle visits Jerry World. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. From well the real deserved. Cowboys fan here yeah, at this desk. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, find out how Rex Ryan plans to stop Rob Gronkowski. It's a tall task. We'll tell you what Rex said about Gronk later on. And speaking of the game you just mentioned, we have more coaches talking about opposing players they're facing this week. Chip Kelly gives his thoughts on division rival Tony Romo. We'll discuss that in just a bit. But first, we kick things off with tonight's AFC West clash. Broncos Chiefs both are 1-0 facing off in the hostile Arrowhead Stadium. Peyton, you usually shows out on Thursday night football and normally has the Chiefs number winning the last eight straight against KC. Broncos Chiefs, Darren, who gets the W? I like what I saw with Kansas City and Alex Smith last week. I, I think, I honestly think at home at Arrowhead Stadium, coming off what they did and the confidence they, they had coming out of, out of Houston and watching that that entire offense get going when you look at you know jeremy macklin travis kelsey was He's unstoppable awesome. against yep. houston last week and they're trying to find ways to get him the ball and match up against smaller corners and then of course jamal charles in that running game and anyway when you look at this game and this matchup the broncos are still trying to find their way in that offense peyton manning is not comfortable within that offense right now and the running game has got hasn't gotten started taking that offense which is which has struggled last week into Arrowhead Stadium, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be on a high. Defensively, they're going to come to play, and offensively, they have some weapons. I'm still calling that an upset. You're, no, I'm not calling it an upset. I am. Okay. I'm still calling, I'm it, an calling it an upset. Well, I mean, Kansas City's favored at home by three, so. In my mind, just okay. because of history. All right, that's fine. G give me, throw a score out there so you're, we get your level of conviction here. I'm going to say it's going to be 27-17. Okay, yeah, 10 point. That's, that's yeah. fairly convincing. And obviously, we all well remember what happened to the New England Patriots when they visited Arrowhead on a Monday night, which was the fourth game of last season, and it was 41 to 14. <sighs> Gut feeling, I believe Peyton Manning will win again at Arrowhead. And he's won at Arrowhead all three of his Denver Bronco years. And he's won fairly handily at Arrowhead all three times. In his career, he's six and one at Arrowhead with 20 touchdown passes to only five interceptions. So clearly, the stadium fits his eyes, so to speak, where, where he's very comfortable throwing the football in that environment, as noisy as it might get, and it obviously rivals Seattle for the noisiest outdoor stadium in the league. But I still believe in Peyton as a top-flight quarterback, and, and I get what you're saying about clashing with Kubiak and the new offense, and, and he didn't look completely comfortable, although it was ironic to me that they did throw it 40 times and they ran it only 25 times against a Baltimore team that a lot of people think is a Super Bowl caliber team with or without Terrell Suggs. Mm -hmm. right. Like, it, it's a very good football team. It's a very physical football team, and as Peyton had to remind the media, hey, you know, we, we actually won that <laughs> game yeah. last Sunday, yeah. and they did, 19 to 13. Mm -hmm. They won. Even though Flacco threw a heck of a pass at, at the end of the game, game that yes. could have won it. Yeah. But still, I think Denver's defense is still a little bit better than Kansas City's defense. Just, just a little bit. And, look, I, I, I get what you say. You know, Travis Kelsey was a fantasy phenom mm -hmm. last yeah. week, and I'm sure people are going to jump all over him this time around. That game was 27 to 6 at Houston, and it wound up 27 to 20 when Ryan Mallett was inserted into the lineup and gave him a little little right. spark and pop, and he's obviously going to start again for the Texans. I, I, I'm going to say what I said yesterday. Kansas City is in Missouri, which is called the Show Me State, mm -hmm. and and I need to be shown a little bit more by this team because. Year after year, we get on this bandwagon, and then we all fall off the bandwagon. And last year, as I pointed out yesterday, they had a five-game winning streak, and that was after the New England game. Right. And then everybody said, 
well, here come the Chiefs, and there went the Chiefs. And they lost three in a row, starting with the game at Oakland. Remember this? And they yeah. just tumbled right out of the play. They were not a playoff team last year. Are you sure? Now, to your opening point, which was Mark Schlereth's point on our show yesterday, and he opened my eyes and gave me pause. Because remember, Mark helped coach the Broncos a little bit during yeah. training camp. He's mm -hmm. kind of just a volunteer mm -hmm. advisor, helped coach the offensive line. So I, I'm going to... I'd say he's pretty connected, right? He, sure. he probably he knows what he's yeah. talking about. And he was strong on this show yesterday that there is a clashing of philosophies here and that Peyton is not happy and not comfortable. Okay, well, that dilutes my conviction about this game right. because if you're right about that, if, if Peyton is close to being miserable, as, as he at 39 is, who knows if this is last year's, he approaches age 40, but it could be, but... but is, is he mentally being defeated? Is, does, he, does he feel so handicapped by the new way, the new system? It, it, is the ability to audible at the line of scrimmage slowly being taken out of his hands? Run the play as called. If we call a running play, don't check out of it. Is that what's going on here? You know, and that's the way I looked at it that game last week against the Ravens. It felt like he was handicapped, like he, he wasn't the old Peyton mm -hmm. that we've seen in the past, making the checks at the line of scrimmage. Everything seemed to flow as far as, you know, they, they got in and, out of, uh, in and out of plays differently than they have in the past. And Peyton is a guy who always, you always see him throughout the years, he controls the offense. It co everything flows through mm -hmm. Peyton Manning. Yep. Now it doesn't seem like it feels like it's a Gary Kubiak feel. Even on the first play of the game, they run the football. He, he actually comes out like in a waggle formation, like yeah. he's, he's rolling out. Right. Peyton never rolled out that yeah. way. I, that just wasn't him. So this team is going to change. And I, I think in the end, Kubiak's going to win out. I honestly feel like Kubiak's going to win out because he is the longevity. He is the future of this organization. Okay, hey, but we it, might be talking about this maybe his last year. Do you think that's the right choice, though, for Kubiak to win out? I just think that when you look at the years that are that are possible, Peyton's probably going to play this year, may, maybe next year, as, as, you know, mm -hmm. at best. Mm -hmm. I think Kubiak's a guy who's probably going to be there in the end. And Kubiak's been ex is extremely successful offensively through his tenure as a, as a head coach. He will run the ball. They will at some point start running the ball successfully. I just don't think Peyton's bought into that just yet. Okay, but just me, from a distance, yep. I'm not plugged into that situation. I'm going to bet on Peyton Manning's resume before I'm going to bet on Gary Kubiak's resume, e even as a head coach slash coordinator. I I'll take Peyton as my coordinator over Gary Kubiak, even at age 39. And I get it, and I hear all this arm strength, he's lost. He never had much arm strength. But you know, because you played against him, he can still pick you to pieces because it, he, he's going to cut loose with the football before you can cut loose mentally with where it's going, right? I mean, it, it's, he, he's just going to outthink you and outquick you with his mind. So the arm strength, even though it has handicapped him occasionally, I, I still don't think it's a huge issue with him right now. I think it's going to be an issue. You do? I, I really do. I, I think this team, I think this is going to be a, early on in the season, for this team to be successful, Defensively, they're going to have to travel well and they're going to have to win football games for this offense until this offense finds a way to gel, until Kubiak and, and Peyton Manning can get on the same page. It's not, this is not going to be your same Peyton Manning mm -hmm. offense. They're going to run the ball this year. More, and I knew they threw the ball a lot last week. They're going to try to run the ball, control the line of scrimmage. It's just the way it's Kubiak's philosophy, and that's just the way it's going to be. And I just think in time, this team will get better as the season go, progresses, but right now, this team is going to be a defensive football team, which is totally different than what we've ever seen with a Peyton Manning okay. football team. Bottom line to this, mm -hmm. I liked what I heard from Peyton because I heard ticked off this week. I heard chip on shoulder. Yeah. I heard testy. And again, maybe that's being aimed at his coach. Maybe it's just raw pride. But I think how, however great Peyton can be in his new offense, I think you're going to see it tonight because I think he's on a little quiet mission here to show you I ain't dead yet, right. even in this offense. And I'm going to remind everybody, just when I thought the Chiefs are virtually invincible in night games at that crazy asylum that can be <laughs> Arrowhead, yeah. the, the, I, I forgot that last year Peyton won on a Sunday night at Arrowhead, 29-16. to 16. Again, he had a Julius Thomas and Wes Welker, yep. so, so he doesn't have quite the firepower of weaponry that he had last year. But I'm, 
I'm still going to bet on him tonight. You I'm, know, I think I think we're underestimating, and I and I trust me, I've heard it all week about this this matchup. I think we're underestimating what Andy Reid has built in Kansas City. I, I honestly do, I, and I, I know they struggled last, last year. year. I, I know they, they struggled last year, but I think this this year bringing in Jeremy Macklin right. really opens things up for him. Jamal Charles is a guy that they're running a screen game like they've never run it before. I just I like the feel and the confidence that we're seeing on the offensive side of the ball. Now, give it this, this team has always been, you know, the last couple of years, Houston on the outside, Tom Ali on the other side, they're rushing the pass, mm -hmm. they get after you defensively. This offense is a little different than what they've been in the past. Okay. Well, you've got it fairly convincing. I'm going to go 2017 upset on my part. <laughs> according according to Molly. Yeah. All right, advantage Broncos, advantage <laughs> Chiefs. And I know you mentioned they brought in Jeremy Macklin. Still, the last true wide receiver to score a touchdown was 2013. Dwayne Bowe is not there. Craziness.